Okay, so now that we have audio kit synth one open, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna play a little bit of the patch that I created and then we're gonna recreate it. All right, so uh, that's, you know, my brass patch, not perfect, but I like it. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you how to create a brass patch in Audio Kit Synth 1. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna press on the preset name to drop down the uh, Synth 1 preset menu. Uh, mine may look a little different than yours right now because I'm in, I'm in the user bank. So on the left-hand side, you'll have a selection of banks. This is the one that I'm scrolling up and down now. You wanna choose user inside of the user bank you should choose an initialized patch okay so as you can see i've created a couple brass patches but we're going to go straight to the initialized patch all right so let's do that and now let's press the top uh where the preset name is once again just to get rid of this drop down menu so now let's hear what the initialized patch starts off as so but not a brass patch. One thing I did notice is that there's reverb on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the key on the right hand side that says envelope. Now I'm gonna press pad. Now I'm gonna press effects. And lo and behold, you see that the reverb on the effects rack is turned on. So let's disable it. And now let's go back. Uh, I'm gonna press sequence, tune, main. Okay, now if we navigate it back to the main page, uh, what we're gonna do here is we are going to open up the filter. All right, you'll notice the filter is about set at halfway, so let's just open it all the way up and hear, hear the synth one, once more now. Okay, so what we need for a brass patch are two sawtooth waves. Okay, so for DC01, let's use sawtooth. For DCO2, let's choose sawtooth. Now, normally, what people do is they take two sawtooth waves and have one at one octave and another at the lower octave. What I like to do is I like to have the two sawtooth waves. Um, you know, when I have the opportunity, I like to have two sawtooth waves and have the, those two sawtooth waves kind of detuned. So, for DCO2, I'm going to detune it a bit. Let's just turn the volume down. So. do that because it makes it sound a little bit thicker um, and to me like when you do a brass patch it's not it's not really gonna sound like just one horn and when multiple horns horn players are playing at the same time there's always a chance that someone is just a little bit off pitch than the next person and that's actually a good thing sometimes because it, like I said it makes it sound a little bit thicker so you hear as it has uh, play sound kind of like wobbles a bit okay all right so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add that lower octave by bringing up the sub oscillator but just a touch okay and then choose square tooth uh, square wave <laughs> square tooth uh, choose a square waveform so we can get um, that type of waveform at the bottom. All right, and you're probably thinking, geez, it doesn't sound very much like a brass patch, but don't worry about it. We still got a little bit more work to go. All right, so let's actually turn the filter frequency back down to about halfway where it was before. Still not very brassy. Actually, I'm gonna turn it down just a touch more. Now let's go into the envelope page. Just press the button that says envelope. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the amplitude envelope. I'm gonna add just a touch of release and I'm gonna add just a touch of attack. So it kind of gets a little bit of a swell. Not much, that's actually perfect. Now, after this, what we're gonna do is we're going to adjust the filter envelope. So I'm actually gonna turn the envelope amount all the way up, okay? 
and the attack I'm gonna bring that up quite a bit as well the decay I'll bring up just a touch uh, it's the same as say where it's at in the release I just like to add a little bit to that so now let's hear what we got Let's hear that higher octave. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into the main screen because I actually wanna turn the sub oscillated down some because I think it's a little too high. So let's turn it down a bit. One thing I really like about this synth is that there is a stereo uh, widening effect. So I'm actually gonna turn that on so the um, so it can be like a kind of a wider sound. Okay. Now apparently when screen recording is done, it's usually in mono, so I don't know if that really made any difference to you. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna press envelope, pad effects and now we're going to turn the reverb back on now what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to turn the, the room size up One other thing that I like to do is to actually modulate the tremolo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, on the same page that we're at, under LFO2, you'll see it says tremolo. And I'm just gonna use LFO2 to adjust that. So next to tremolo, I'm gonna use the rectangle on the right side. And I'm just gonna turn that one on, okay? And I'm gonna turn the amplitude all the way up for right now. And I'm gonna turn the rate all the way up. And I do this sometimes just to kind of hear how something affects it and then to turn it down just to hear how we can have it at different levels. So the amplitude is basically how much the LFO is affecting the different parameter and the rate is how fast the LFO is moving, okay? So let's hear what it sounds like now. I'm just one you is gonna sound ridiculous. Okay. All right, so now let's turn the uh, rate down so so the alpha isn't moving as fast and you'll hear the difference as we play. That's good for me. And now I'm gonna turn the amplitude down because I don't want it to have such a um, such a large effect going. So let's uh, just turn the amplitude down slowly as we play. Here at some lower octaves. Let's go even lower than that. All right, let's go lower. What? I would say that we're good to go. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna save. So hit the save button, all right? And choose, select the bank for the preset. We're gonna keep that in the user. Mm -hmm. Save or oh, slash rename preset. So let's call this brass. I'll call this brass four because I've done this tutorial a hundred times, but every time I run into some type of technical difficulty, but it don't matter because we're gonna keep on moving. Um, and I'm gonna choose it as a poly because it's a polyphonic synth. Uh, or polyphonic patch, excuse me, and then I'm hit save, and we're good to go. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the cool thing about this is that the modulation wheel, the default setting is to uh, be attached to the filter. So what you can do is you can play and you can adjust the modulation wheel and it, it will kind of add like some excitement to your playing. So watch. guys i hope that this has been helpful and i hope you got something out of it it's your boy cheese the producer and i'm signing off for beat makers the squad peace